The word of the month is sequestration. In the dictionary, it means a general cut in government spending. Wow, I like that idea. The government already spends more than it collects. It's about time someone did something like this. President Obama proposed the idea back in July 2011 when he asked Congress to extend the debt limit. For raising the debt limit, he agreed to sequestration or a general cut in government spending. Nowadays, Obama is singing the sequestration blues. He does not want to cut spending, yet Congress is insisting. That was not a part of the deal, Mr. President. What will happen? I believe government spending will be curtailed. Sequestration? You can call it what you want. There's going to be cutbacks. Government tax income is $2.2 trillion, and the annual budget is $3.1 trillion. We're already in the red. And by the way, the United States owes over $16 trillion. All the great powers have faced sequestration situations. Rome had to remove the troops from Britain because it could no longer afford to garrison the province. Spain had to recall its troops from its overseas possessions and concentrate on those in which it hoped to defend. More recently, the Soviet Union could no longer afford to function on a federal level. I'm not predicting that the U.S. will evacuate all the federal troops and employees out of Texas, leaving it for the Mexicans to own. However, cutbacks are coming, and most likely the territorial cuts will occur overseas. Not to mention, the Blue Angels might not fly in July in Pensacola. From an investment perspective, sequestration could temporarily buoy the dollar. Generally, stocks might go sideways for a while. However, the Federal Reserve is currently committed to printing money, expanding the monetary base. This itself is inflationary, but so far, there are only a few hoses connected to the monetary base fire truck. As more hoses are connected and the velocity of this money gets into motion, then you will see a pronounced inflationary environment. Meanwhile, it makes sense to avoid new low-yielding bonds. Instead, focus upon stocks and companies that have the ability and tendency to grow and raise their dividends. Income-producing real estate also is attractive. Give us a call at Armada Advisors, where we are charting a better course.